So the good thing about containers, no, okay, there's two things to, to bear in mind here. Uh, the first thing is that we're using um, Go to build a static binary. But when I did this about three or four months ago, I found that it wasn't actually properly static. Uh, I had to use these crazy other tag, um, other build arguments, in order to, to bring the net Go library. Has anyone else talked about this? Yeah. Uh, it, but go ahead. Uh, to be honest, I don't really understand why some people on the Go, Go Nuts IRC channel told me to do it this way. And in, it indeed works. It creates a static binary which doesn't depend on, I guess, glibc or whatever uh, that's usually found in a Linux machine. So you can run it in a very, very minimal um, environment. Um, ideally, I'm trying to get my, my uh, minimal environment as frickin' minimal as possible. I just want to run the binary, uh, and, and, and that's the beauty of it, actually. Because if you're doing, um, what do you call it, if you're doing deployments with like a, a typical LAMP stack where you have Apache, MySQL, PHP, I mean, we're talking like hundreds of megs worth of, of binaries, which is insane. I want the good thing about Golang is that, well, to be honest, the, the binaries that are generated with, with Go are quite big, but but they're a lot smaller uh, in in comparison to a typical LAMP stack. So yeah, I, you create the stat, uh, you create the um, the proper st statically built uh, binary with the net Go stuff, which is God knows what it is, something to do with networking probably. And then the container itself. So with Docker, um, but I, who's talked about Docker here? Did, was there a Docker sp no, speak? Yeah. So I don't like Docker because it's freaking bloated and heavyweight. And when you, <laughs> but um, so I've been looking for alternatives. And to be honest, there's some things about Docker that are really good. Most of it is bad. But uh, <laughs> the cool thing about Docker is that the Docker file is pretty good. And when you're using when you're using systemd containers. Uh, and also probably LXC, LXC containers, or I don't know what is L, what, how do you, how do you pronounce LXC? LXC. 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 Okay. LXC. Well, you have to you have to like build it up yourself. So this is what I'm doing right here. I'm basically um, creating. Can you all see that clearly? I'm just creating a container directory, uh, and I've called it Foobar. Isn't that clever? And and then I'm pack strapping. Um, and Packtrack, for those people who don't know, is like the bootstrap if you come from a Debian or Ubuntu background. And, and the cool thing about um, f all you need for, for a systemd container is basically a, a Linux style environment, a Linux style file system. To be honest, I'm not too sure why. So, this is the worst talk ever. It's like do it this way, do it that way. I don't know why. Um, but systemd basically craps out if if the uh, if if there isn't a Linux file system hierarchy as as far as I'm uh, understand it. So this creates the the Linux file system. I copy in the static binary and then I call systemd to run that uh, GoLang binary. Okay, that was incredibly boring. But uh, the the good thing about this is that um, it's fast. What the hell? Yeah, Isn't Vim yeah. awesome? It's yeah, the awesome. best editor ever. Uh, what was I going to say? Uh, about the I'm about, I'm, I was going to just show you how quickly it, like... Hi, can you just push the overscan on your display? What's that mean? Mm. Can you talk English uh, to me? Uh, <laughs> open up a window. Can you, can you get straight across? Can you not full screen a bit? Is that okay. better? Yeah. Is that better? Better? Yeah, yeah, that's better. Use the use the left hand side. <laughs> okay. Okay, okay, weirdos. Um, I need um, uh, like if I'm um, well, uh, I can't see what I'm doing now. Um, assuming I have okay, so so basically, let me just do this from from scratch. If I do, I'm just like cleaning my container. So I think make makes the binary. Is that what it does? I can't remember. For some strange reason, making that binary is a bit too long. God knows what it's doing. It's pulling the entire... So the binary is what? 7.6 uh, megabytes. megabytes. And then I make the container. 
Um, I think my make file is a bit crap. I think so I do a build. A, it rebuilds everything. Oh, yeah, my con so basically um, I call packstrap. I, I basically extract the file system and then I'm already running um, uh, the binary. So if I go to lo localhost uh, 3000, I'll be running my Golang app, which is very unimpressive. You just uh, use use it to put put in the current date, <laughs> and then it calculates the difference. So, um, and there it is running. So, I think it took about well, if you ignore um, the the if you ignore the 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 binary build thing, and and if you ignore the initial pack strapping, um, I think you'll find that the whole the whole thing takes like no time at all, right? Uh, system D, system D, and spawn uh, minus D foo bar. And then the name of the binary DC. Cool. It's it's instant. That's the beauty of uh, LXC is just as fast because uh, I mean don't don't kid yourself. System D and spawn. System D uh, generally is I like to think of it is just a very very well well designed thin shimmy on LXC. I don't know if you've ever used LXC, but um, straight up. But LXC is, has got a terrible user interface in my opinion. System D and spawn. All it does is make it a lot easier to use. So there you have it. I think um, I think that should be a lot faster than Docker, and it should be a lot faster than anything sh I've ever seen. Do a time on it. What do you mean a time? I don't, oh, that that won't work because it will be running the binary. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, well, I mean, maybe it it takes it takes next to no time. Um, I am cheating a little bit here because uh, by default it doesn't set up. Uh, what do you call it? A host. Um, it doesn't set up the the networking. I'm just using the NAT style networking, which is cheating a lot. I think Docker has a probably uses host. What do you call it? Bridge networking by default. If I if I have to set up that sort of virtual network interface, you basically have to boot into systemd in the container to set that all up, or um, which means basically calling DH client as you boot it up. You can make it faster by calling just IP command to set up the network interface. Anyway, long story short, if you want proper network isolation, isolation um, it takes like an, another second. End of, that's so yeah, bad, good. isn't it? <laughs> no, it's good, it's good. Yeah, so. Well, what would what you choose uh, system D? Uh, well, I use, I mean, I use Arch Linux. Any, Anyone else cool enough to run Arch or yes? High five to the Arch, dude! If you use Arch, it makes you cool. If you use Mac OS X, you're a loser. If you use Windows, I have absolutely no respect for you. Uh, what? How do you stumble upon the data? How did I stumble upon it? Um, I don't know. I, yeah, I, I've, been like Docker, I've been exploring. I've been exploring. Uh, well, I don't like Docker. I was looking for alternatives. I wanted to use LXC, but LXC was was written by a madman. <laughs> and um, and then System D and Spawn came along, and I'm using it. I'm using it on my. I'm using it on the, what is my machine machine called? I'm using it at home actually. Go home. Okay, maybe my server's down. Why can't so I? Is SSH blocked? How do you actually use it? What's the difference between yes, just running the app without any container? Uh, well, if well, running, uh, well, running the app without a container is <coughs> you can do it that way. Well, <laughs> you can do it that way, but it's why can't I? Is SSH blocked or something? Yes. Really? <laughs> You're joking. Kind yeah, of more one blocks SSH. It's a hacker sport. This demands action. Uh, I bet you they won't. Actually, because you have a static binary, you can actually run it back. This is what I have to do in Malaysia nowadays because internet out in Malaysia sucks. <laughs> Let's see if um, PayPal can can block me here. PayPal will be blocked as well. It can't be. Yeah. I've never seen anyone properly block it. Uh, wait, is my IP changed? Uh, what the fuck? Oh yeah, you answer. No, actually, I still have PayPal API. Uh, isn't that a PayPal address? Yes. Shit. Um, <laughs> well, 
What was I going to say? I was going to say something what, profound. What, what okay, why do you use... A, what, that's a good question. Why do you use a container? Because it makes it like... Um, well, I can't show you my machine at home, but if, can you see that? Why do you use a container? Fuck, you got me there! The answer is... Uh, I like it... What? Auth username? What the... the sorry, that distracted me. Um, why use a container? Why use a container? It's because you basically say these. You 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 have, you have that. I well, it's just because it's isolated. Why would you want it isolated? You want it isolated so that it doesn't. Um, if if that binary is gamed, and to be honest, I've written some stupid GoLang apps in the past. Uh, what is that directory thing called? The file server thing? Uh, there's a the HTTP. Yeah, there's this thing files. called like. Dir files, and I accidentally do filed my home directory, and then people could accidentally take out my SSH uh, secret key. That oh. is very stupid, and it's actually pretty easy to do. I like basically I had like a dot where a slash should have been or something like that, and then someone had my home directory <laughs> contents. Oh. But if you have everything in container, then the only thing you if that thing if that binary gets gained or something, it's limited to that. Um, file system and you're probably thinking to yourself well that's no different to using ch root and that's true ch root does the same thing as container but with containers there's so much more you can actually control uh, like memory you can control cpu you can you can control all the um, uh, sort of control groups surrounding uh, that container it's it's a bit fine grained and to be honest i never use these things to be honest but it's good to see when maybe it's taking too much ram and then you can limit Limit the RAM, and then also finally, when you use a network inter uh, network virtual inter interface, you can see in, you can just like uh, look at um, sorry, what the you can just look at what's it called proc net dev. Oh. You can just have a look at that. Uh, oh, it doesn't look good, and you can and you can see every single um, sort of txrx packet. And account for how many bytes are being sent, which is important. Um, so you know what the hell it's doing. And if you run lots of machines, you get everything isolated. And there's also like there's this cool command which I can't show you very easily. Okay. Good question, guy. Good yeah. question. Instead of making a, a static binary, why don't you come? Com com uh, why don't you pull in all the library dependencies into your container? Because that's lame. Because you got you got to go you got to go all static or or not, you you or you know, otherwise well, it's just case, crap. Case, Share it. Couldn't make it all static because of third party dependencies. So oh, then I drop those dependencies. Zero Move on. In my case. Uh, no, I don't like shared systems. I mean, for me, you got to just do it right, and I want everything. St to me, a static a static build is like a package. You either deploy a tar file or a zip file. Or you install, or you deploy the whole goddamn binary, and I prefer just to use binaries. It's just so much easier to, you know, um, you know, for security to to SHA one summit, and you, you just know exactly what it is. It's so much easier to roll back. Okay. The reason why I use containers is I package all my dependencies into that container, and when I pull the container, all the dependencies follow it. Uh, well, I don't like to. Well, you, I mean, that's you a per perfectly a valid use case. You, you I'm not going to mock you to you too have much. A re religious reason against using dynamic binaries. Uh, it's not religious. <laughs> I, I try to make myself clear. It's, there's a lot of benefits to using static uh, builds. Yeah, you can roll back easily. I love to see people roll back in a shared system. You can't. That's why, you, that's why it's so bullshit. But if it's in a container, you can, you can just swap out the container. Well, I'd rather. I'd rather uh, I'm, I'm for simplicity. I'd rather swap out a binary. Yeah. Woo and then I can MD5 summit. I know exactly what the hell's going on. Yeah. If you're using a shared system, you probably have to commit everything to Git, which I've done a lot in the past, to be honest, just because I need to know what the hell's going on. But if it's just a binary, gee, well, you can commit that to Git. That makes things easy too. But uh, it's a lot more complex when you're dealing with a shared system. I think that's it. Where's the pizza? Oh, pizza! You were so late. <laughs> you were so late. Um.
let me see if I can. Why? What is going on here? Why can't I see my cursor anymore? Uh, two. I can't. What the hell's going? Sorry, I'm not going to bother with this VPN. I'm going to just. I'm just going to go on the real internet with my phone. <laughs> <laughs>